Hello, this video is about how to get and display your model information. That is your measure descriptions, your measure expressions, your calculated column expressions, your descriptions, and so on, and display that to your report viewers. We can do that contextually through relationships and it's super cool. Ironically, I just did a video about how to do this by querying the Power BI service last week. And then they released this new feature with info measures and calculated tables this week. So I'm probably gonna be unlisting that one. It's how technology goes lately, am I right? But this new method that I'm gonna show you is much easier, much faster, and it's much better because you don't have to have your report published to do it. If you're not super familiar with DAX, don't be intimidated. This is literally the easiest DAX you'll ever write in your life. You can even copy and paste it from the video description if you want to. So these functions have been around for a long time. The major change is that we can now use them in calculated tables, meaning we can put the data in a visualization. So to do this, we're gonna go to the modeling tab and then click on new table. Don't do this enter data button here. That's the wrong kind of table. We need the one in the modeling tab. And then we're gonna give our table a name. So I'm gonna query measures first. So I'm gonna call this info measures. You can call it whatever you want. And then for our expression, we're just gonna do info dot view. And then you can see the options here. So we can do columns, measures, relationships, and tables. So you want one calculated table for each of these that you want to display. I'm gonna start with measures and hit enter. So what that does is it adds a table for us over here on the right, and we can look at it in table view over here. So you can see the measure name, the table it's in. This is a description here, it's super wide. Data type has nothing in it for me, which is kind of weird. There's our expressions, super long column, and a format string. So this is like date format will be in that one. So I'm gonna come back here and add tables for each of the other queries. So the columns and the tables. All right, so we have all of our calculated tables in to get the behavior of the contextual descriptions for our measures that we get with the info tool tip here. What we need to do is create a relationship between our field parameters table, which is where these are coming from. A field parameter, if you're not familiar, gets created in the modeling tab under new parameter fields. And what you can do with these is you can add measures to them to be able to dynamically change what's shown in charts. So if I go look at the field parameter table in here, you can see that it shows the name of the measure in here with a little bit of extra text. This is something that we can use for a relationship between the field parameter and the information about our measures. You can do this for columns too, so I would recommend making a separate field parameter table for your columns versus your measures. But we need to do an extra step before we can relate them because we need to have matching values in this column versus our measure name here. See how they're not exactly the same? So all we do for that is we add a new calculated column onto our info.measures table. So I'm going to go to new column here in the table view with my info.measures table selected. And I'm gonna call this field parameter key. You can call it whatever you want. And then what we're gonna do here is we're gonna concatenate some stuff. So we're gonna concatenate, I'm gonna do a double quotes and then a single quotes and a double quote. So this is basically just getting the single quote into text. You have to put double quotes around it because it's a string. And then do an and sign. And then we want our table name that the measure is in. So I'm gonna start typing table and it'll pop up. So we want our info measures table name and another and. And then the same double quote, single quote, double quote to close that. And then another and, and double quotes, open square bracket, close the quotes, another and. Now we need our measure name. One more and, and then close the square bracket in double quotes. So hit enter. So that gives us something to match to our field parameter table for the relationship. So now if we go to the model view, we can drag these tables into its own little model. So I'm gonna drag our info measures, our columns, and our tables on here, and then our field parameter table for our measures. So for our relationship with our info table and our measures, we wanna use this field parameter key column that we created and relate that to measures fields. Mine's on the top because I have it pinned to the top, yours might not be. 
and it's going to automatically be one-to-one -one cardinality cross filter direction both because there's only one value in the field parameter table for each measure and save and then if we want to go nuts here we can also relate the rest of these tables that's not super necessary unless you're showing a bunch of tables and you want to use cross filtering i'll just go through that super quick here so we want our name field from info tables and relate that to the table field in info measures. So we're just taking the matching column from both. And then we want to relate our tables to our columns in the same way. So that's got a table field also. We use, it's up the top now, name to filter table. Save. So now if I go back to my report, I have an info icon here. So these are in the insert menu under buttons. There's info and there's help question mark. This info icon is supposed to be showing information about the measure that's selected in our field parameter slicer here. So because I created that relationship between the field parameter table and our measure metadata, I can just drop that into the tooltip here under action. So you need to turn action on in the tooltip and then I set it to web URL because something has to be selected here in order to use the tooltip, but I'm leaving web URL blank and then just going down to the tooltip section and then using this FX button here to select our measure description. So that was this one here. So it's gonna take the first value, it's a one-to-one -one relationship, so that's totally fine, and just click okay. So now when I hover on this, I can see the description for the selected measure and that changes when I select different ones here. And I can drop the description for the measure into a table so you can see it changing when I select too. So as far as what to do with the rest of it, I drop these things into table visuals. So I've got a table of tables here. You can filter things out in here. So you just select the visual and then deselect the things that you don't want to show. Like I leave out the parameter table because I feel like people that are looking at this report don't even necessarily know what a parameter table is, right? We can also use that is hidden property to filter out columns and measures and tables that we don't want to display in here. So if I just search for is hidden, you can see these here, you can use these as filters. And for the measures, if I select that one, we have the state column, so we can filter out errors here. We have is hidden again, and we have the folder. So because we added that relationship between our tables and our columns and our measures, we can click on something in the tables table to filter the other tables. So when I select tasks, it only shows me tasks columns. So that's cool. This one over here is just a screenshot of the relationship diagram. I don't have a table of the relationship info because I feel like the visual aspect of it is easier for people to digest anyways. So if you find this sort of thing interesting, there is also another place to get this data and that is the Power BI Admin API. The Power BI Admin API has all of this at a tenant level and it also has data set refresh history. So if you're a data engineer or you have a data engineer that's willing to work on that for you, they can get that data out of the API, put it in a database, and then you can query that in your reports also. The advantage of this particular technique versus the admin API is that you can do this in like three seconds without knowing any code really. So it's more of a low code approach. <laughs> so that's everything I have for you today. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.